I'm Scott Al Miller. It's the 26th of September, 2022. It's Monday morning and ish. And uh, this is my vlog of daily life in Nicaragua. I am in Esteli and I am recording this in real time because the interesting stuff of my day is happening right now. So let's get straight to it. It has been um, kind of a terrible morning. Uh, it's just sometimes that happens. It has been a really long, rough weekend starting at Friday night for me. Just work things one disaster after another and not all of them related just a really really long stressful weekend so don't want to burden you guys with that stuff just this is my vlog and sometimes my life creeps into it it's just just how it is welcome welcome to scott's vlog this is it and welcome to this cool house right here i like this i like the big trees and the style very cool hola and then this house is cool too there's a lot of cool stuff in esteli i'm liking esteli a lot so far in my walking around though and i haven't done a lot so i don't want to i don't want to speak too early I still like Madagalpa more. I like the look, but it's a lot more hills, a lot harder to walk. Um, I find it more interesting, but this is, this is a neat city. I like it. Uh, so this morning, got up, uh, managed to get breakfast at the hotel, and then went out and walked for an hour and a half or so, which was good. Got a good amount of exercise, got a good amount of recording done. Feel good about that. And, uh, oh, this is, let's check this out. These cute little spots. This would be perfect for a cafe. Those beautiful flowers. Instead, it's a boot store. I mean, it's perfect for a boot store, too. Good for them. And uh, had to race back, had to do meetings in the hotel, which is not what I wanted to do. Uh, spend my day. Ooh, check this place out. I don't know what this is. It is a. It's like a family support center or something. Really cute. Uh, had to do meetings for several hours, three hours of meetings on a day. I had booked this day to just be in Esteli. I didn't technically have anything I had to do. So I have a coworker with me and she's dealing with legal stuff. And so delivering paperwork and picking things up and uh, getting deliveries and stuff and getting papers served and just a lot of logistics stuff. So she was working on that all day and I was dealing with these meetings, but my day was scheduled to be doing nothing but exploring Esteli on foot for you guys. Really, the people who got screwed out of stuff today is you, the little people who live in my GoPro. You didn't get nearly as much walking around Esteli as I scheduled for you. That's, that's so unfair to you. That's, that's, I'm upset on your behalf. This road looks boring, it's dirt. What is, what is this? What's, well, I'm gonna show it to you. Here we go. I don't know why there's a dirt road in the middle of the city. Seemed like a good place to walk, but eh, we'll switch roads when we get down just a little bit farther. We're walking just to the west of the Pan American and heading south uh, so that uh, we can show a little bit more of the city and not just the main highway. <laughs> We're definitely on a road where people are like, why is he filming here? because we want to see everything. It's all so interesting. This, what must be an apartment building here is gorgeous. Look at this. No, it's a medical clinic. I still think those are apartments. Look at that. That would be a gorgeous building to have an apartment in. That is, wow. That does not fit this neighborhood very much. It fits the city, but not the, not the block, I guess. Although this one over here is pretty nice. So, three hours of meetings, was not able to stay later in the hotel, so had to, had to pack up and go. So I am literally walking from the north side of the city at the hotel, the Hex Hotel, which was quite nice, I would recommend it, all the way to the bus terminal in the south, which is not ridiculously far, it's 2.6 kilometers, but it's a warm day. It's not a hot day because it's Esteli, but it is warm. This is a lot of bikes over here. I'm assuming this is some kind of bike dealer. Heaven only knows. We're gonna try to figure out where to go from here. Well, I think this way. We'll walk through the bikes. So that's, that's my frustrating day getting started. So I really wanted to put in hours and hours. I was planning on just leaving my backpack in the hotel and uh, taking you guys out for a walk with me. It's kind of like you're in like a stroller that I hold in my hand, a little tiny stroller where hundreds or thousands of you 
ride along on my walks. Let's get you all some fresh air, I say to the internet people that live in my camera. And you say, no, that's not what we want to do, but there's nothing you can do about it because you're in my camera and I'm taking you anyway. So here we are going through Esteli with no particular topic of the day and just enjoying the walk to the bus station. I've already gone through an entire battery today and I'm charging from the Volta grip. Fingers crossed that that keeps working. I do have a backup battery. I'm hoping not to have to switch to it anytime soon. I do have a four hour bus trip back to Leon to do that I'm on my way to right now. So that is, that is the current plan. Gonna catch the bus. It is currently coming up on one o'clock as I'm recording this. Another nice modern building here on the right. And uh, so probably catch a bus by two. That was kind of close. Uh, and from there, it'll be six-ish, hopefully, if all goes well, when I arrive back in Leon. So this particular walk, I don't normally do this. I try very hard not to carry things that I don't need when walking with the camera. It's just, it's exhausting. Uh, but today I have to. So I have my pockets are full of wallet and keys and phone, and I'm wearing heavier clothes than I normally do. Luckily, we're up north. These are, this is a nice stretch of, of houses and stuff over here on the left. Hope you're getting this. And, uh, and I have my backpack on. So I have a laptop, all of my clothes, paperwork, uh, camera stuff, extra batteries. Everything's on my back. I don't normally do this because you definitely get sweaty with a backpack walking for a really long way anywhere, let alone in Nicaragua. So yeah, that's, that's how that's going right now. But it's, it is actually quite nice out here. Luckily I have my hat on, so I'm not burning. This place has exotic ice cream. I'm not sure what that means. Hoping, I'm hoping this is an enjoyable walk through the city because I don't have a lot of topic. Oh, I'm gonna get this mural over here. Another ice cream place. This one's Dos Pinos. This is not exotic, it's just from Costa Rica. All right, sorry for the big spin. Big spin. All right, we're forward again. This is a nice city. It is very walkable, like this is easy. At 844 meters, it's only a little bit thin on the air, like, if you're not talking the whole time like me, if you're not jogging, you're gonna be fine. If you're doing this, you do notice just the tiniest bit, but not bad at all. I am enjoying it not being quite as warm. I just thought about it for a little bit. And that's about it. I have one day that I need yet to record. I have not yet recorded the 23rd. I've recorded the 22nd, 24th, 25th. This is the 26th, and I just have to do the 23rd, and I should be all caught up with you guys. So with the amount of distance I have left to go, I'm going to switch over and do that recording right now, which is all weird that I talk about things like this. For you guys, it must be crazy. Like, okay, so we're zipping back to the past. Wait, I already saw this episode that he's talking about, but he hasn't done it yet. Wow, we know things that he doesn't know. It's a weird existence being the people who live inside my GoPro, isn't it? Like, it, seriously, it's strange. And uh, you can tell I've had a stressful day. Like I just, it's, here we are, yeah. Looking forward to getting home, playing some video games with my kids, snuggling my dogs, and uh, hopefully some of the stuff going on today gets resolved. It's not looking, it lo it's just stress. Uh, everything today why i don't know some days just everything comes together i mean it has to right it's just the nature of cycles of things so can't be surprised that it happens some days it's a bunch of good things that come together it's just how it is so that's where we are i am going to zip off and record some other stuff so we'll catch up with you later on today all right, my videos are out of order and I'm doing these in clumps because it is such a frantic week trying to get these videos done, so I apologize. After recording the first half of the day's video, I did several more days while walking through Esteli. So at this point, I think you've seen all of the Esteli footage that just ended a second ago. And um, at, at now, we had to get to the bus station. So if you watch my videos, they're out of order from when I filmed them, which I know is really confusing, so I apologize about that. You kind of have to put together the last few days and figure out when I filmed what around Esteli. But at the end of the video for 
for the 20 second i believe it is that can't be right the 23rd the end of the 23rd i arrive at the uh bus station we physically get to the bus station that was me walking just a few minutes ago now poof here we are i'm now in leon telling you about getting to that bus station which if you think it's confusing imagine what it's like for me because i have to put all this together and keep it straight you guys just have to see me assemble it um so we got to the bus station i filmed just a second of the bus station this was pretty easy i didn't get to film on the bus like i try not to do that too much i try to get a little bit because i know you guys want to see it uh but i try not to get over the top with it and uh especially depending on how frantic i am because i've got to deal with my backpack and everything else hola como esta he was He's in some of my parade videos too. And uh, so got to the bus station and there was a little bit of confusion, but basically there's two buses that come out of uh, Esteli Sur. One goes to Matagalpa and one goes to Managua. They're the two big cities that have routes from Esteli. And this makes sense, no big deal. Basically, Esteli sits on the Pan American. And by basically, I mean, it sits on the Pan American. And when you wanna leave town, you're heading to the south. When heading south, there is a terminal at San Isidro, which I talked about the other day. If you're going to Matagalpa, you can just take a bus straight to Matagalpa, you're good. If you're going to Managua, you go straight to Managua, you're good. If you want to go somewhere else, you're either going to Managua and then catching a bus on to the south, like if you're going to Cuigalpa or Rivas or, or Hinotepe, you're going to go to Managua first, change buses and go on. If you're going to the mountains like Hinotega, you're going to go to uh, Matagalpa, switch buses and go on, Matagalpa being the big mountain city. If you are heading to other locations that are not beyond Matagalpa or uh, Managua and are not to the north, because if you're heading to Ocotal or to Tegucigalpa, you would take a bus from uh, the, the other terminal, I presume, because that's the direction you'd be going. Then what you do is you go to San Isidro, which is the southernmost town in Esteli, or the southeasternmost town, I guess, uh, near Sabaco, which is technically part of Matagalpa, and at San Isidro there is another terminal. You get off the bus there, and there there are buses waiting to take you to other locations. Most importantly, Malpaisillo and Leon, Malpaisillo Mal being on the way to Leon, so it's a single bus line. So it's really easy. The Matagalpa buses and the uh, Esteli buses, which are the same bus, I guess, it's just popping through, stop on the west side of the terminal, and the Leon buses are on the east side of the terminal. It's just a, just a walkway with, you know, uh, kind of a passway through in the middle. So you get off the buses on one side, walk to the other side of the platform, and there's buses waiting for you. It doesn't get much easier. Unfortunately, so, so it's about an hour to San Isidro, not quite, a little bit less, and got to San Isidro, uh, and I was in a kind of a rush to get out, and I was leaving people behind. Everyone else is heading on to Managua directly, so I'm the only one switching to Leon. Uh, which I'm perfectly comfortable with, no problem at all. But in doing so, I quickly jumped off the bus and accidentally left my hat behind. So this is the moment in my telling of my day that my black normal Jack Wolfskin disappeared and I was left without a hat as I traveled to Leon. So I had to get back into town and grab this Jack Wolfskin fedora. Um, why am I not Jack Wolfskin sponsored? I must have more Jack Wolfskin hat footage on YouTube of any person ever. So Jack, get on that. I mean, seriously, like for real. Um, the, and uh, who's the other one I said the other day? Zoho. Zoho email, Zoho Connect, Zoho Click. I use so much Zoho in my business life, talk about it so much, and I wear Jack Wolfskin so much. Why am I not sponsored? Come on. Somebody who knows them needs to talk. Um, I'm, I'm obviously kidding. No one would want, no one's buying Jack Wolfskin hats because I have one. Um, the, uh, so the ride back to Leon went really, really easy, other than the panic about not having my hat until they sent me pictures of the people heading to Managua wearing my hat. I'm like, okay, okay. So I'll be getting that back. Not a big deal. But that was definitely a panic. I have not lost an article of clothing like that in a very long time. But when we went to Europe in 2012, we were on the train going from Belgium to Germany. We got off in Germany, and at the first stop in Germany, I hopped off the train and I left my basically brand new, really nice fleece on the train, and it was gone. We knew it was gone the instant I stepped off the train. I'm like, no! And so my entire trip to Europe in 2012, which was our grand tour, six weeks with our kids when they were little, was without the fleece that I brought for the trip. And Dominica still reminds me of that. It has been a decade. That was 2012. This is why we're at a decade and a quarter, because that was early-ish 2012. 
They will not let me live it down. And the fear of leaving something on pu public transportation still haunts me. It was a $15 fleece. Let's, let's be real. $15 over 10 years ago, and it still bothers me that that fleece... I would still be wearing that fleece in these videos sometimes on, on a chilly day, if, uh, if only I had it. And uh, so when I left my hat, I'm like, no! And, and what's funny is that hat is the sibling to the hat I bought immediately after losing the fleece. I didn't buy it because I lost the fleece, but if you look at the videos from 2012, everything since that 2012 trip, I've been wearing a Jack Wolfskin hat. Now I have three of them, but that's when I got it right after losing the fleece. So I was terrified that it was gone, but I'm like, I know it was on my leg. I must have stood up. It must have fallen here. They found it and, and I'll get it back shortly. I got back to uh, Leon and just took a taxi back to the house. I really should have walked. Honestly, every time I take a taxi, I'm sorry about it because it always seems like, oh, it's gonna be so much easier. And then it's not. They filled the taxi with six passengers, six people. And, and dropped me off last. So they drove all over the city. Now they, you know, it only charged me 40 cord. It's not like I had to, I, it was a, basically a dollar. So it's really cheap, but I literally could have walked home in just in like maybe five to 10 minutes longer. Like I saved almost no time, did not get any exercise, was stuck on a taxi all that time and spent a dollar. All I didn't need to, I could have just walked home. The only reason I even entertained taking a taxi is because I had my backpack full of stuff but it wasn't that big of a deal. And I walked, if you watch the videos, I had been walking all over Esteli with that backpack on. Like my back was sweaty. I was over it. I might as well have just gotten home easily. And, and I didn't, I made the wrong decision. Should have skipped the taxi. If you look at a map, the distance that I have to walk home is pretty far. It seems like taking a taxi would be the smart thing, but I just don't think it is in so many circumstances. It just ends up being wrong. Now, if I'm with people and they don't want to walk, obviously that's different. But when it's just me and it's not raining, I should just, Anyway, so I got back home. The dogs were excited to see me. The kids were excited to see me. It was nice to be home and uh, got to hang out for the evening. So tonight I discovered that um, we have access to the Lord of the Rings, um, uh, 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 the Rings of Power on Amazon Prime. This is a new series. It's actually been out for a few weeks and I haven't been paying too close of attention. I do see the ads for it, but I'm so not connected with things in ads. If anything, I tend to be turned off by ads. So when I see an ad for a product a lot, I tend to be like, I don't, I don't have any interest in that thing um, because I have to, you have to zone it out or else you become like, I have to buy things, right? So you intentionally have to kind of separate yourself from things you see in ads. And I'm so used to seeing ads for shows and movies that are like coming soon. I don't care if it's coming soon, it doesn't exist to me. And once I go check it, I'll be like, oh, it doesn't, it's not a real thing. Why'd you advertise something to me I can't use, right? Um, boy, this sky is fantastic, right? Oh, look how the church looks with that sky. This is amazing. Wow. I hope it looks as good on the final video as it does on my little screen. To me, it almost looks like black and white up here with that like high contrast. That is cool, cool, cool. Love it. Um, I'm gonna, I'm gonna keep this going. Are those birds? I, I don't know what I just saw. I think, I think I hear birds. Um, so I started binge watching uh, the Rings of Power. And I didn't know what I was going to expect, so I kind of, I, I feel like I went into it pretty open-minded within, within reason. And honestly, it's really good. If you are a fan of, what am I saying? Of course you are. Everyone's a fan of Peter Jackson's Lord of the Rings. Um, I'm not a fan of Lord of the Rings as books. Uh, I think Tolkien was a truly epically bad author in every possible way. His dialogue is terrible. His characters are flat. His world is pathetic. He breaks every known rule of writing. Um, and, is, and is famous for his writing, but I've met very, very few people who actually like his books. There are some. My mother-in-law loves them. Um, she re-reads -re -re them often. I have read The Hobbit. I've read The Lord of the Rings. I read them when I was young and said, wow, this is crap. Um, and now that I'm older, I have a better understanding as to why they're crap and how lazy writing they are um, and all the world problems that he had. And it, it, basically the things that, that bother me stem from, he makes a very, very flat world that has no intelligence to it. The, the world does not make any sense. It, there's no economy. There's no um, logical groupings of people. All the characters are defined by their race. It's basically like if you took a really simplistic, super racist view of Europe and were like, Scottish people can only break rocks and, and 
uh, British people can only whittle wood and, and their entire worlds are based around this one thing. And the Welsh, all they can do is eat. They can't even have common thoughts. They must just eat. Like it's super, super racist and it's not even couched in anything, right? They basically just labeled all these racial groups and just made the whole thing a, a huge play on racial stereotypes to an extent that the characters don't make any sense. Right? No one knows how to do anything. They don't have tools because there's no one who makes tools. There's only, only people who eat and people who fight and people who work with rock and people who work with wood. We forgot there was no race that works with iron. Like the whole thing's just so dumb in how it's approached. And it's really hard to put a story into his world because basically he created an entire universe that was designed around the singular events of his story. So it lacks all the things like, why would this story even occur? Because the whole world only exists for this story. And, and where did any of the characters come from? Like, there's just no time for any history or anything interesting to happen. And going into the, the, the Rings of Power, one of the things you notice immediately is that the story picks up thousands of years before the events of Lord of the Rings, but with all the same characters. They just have to live for the entire event, uh, the entire history of the universe, because he designed the world around so few characters. And so the war, like his entire Middle Earth only has like 800 people in it. Like the, it, it, none of it makes any sense. When you, if you actually care about the story and care about the world he was creating, it all falls apart. And that's one of the things that I hate about literature is I expect the people who wrote it to care as much as the people who are reading it. Um, I expect them to put in effort and, um, or I want them to, right? Um, and, I, and I want them to be telling me about an exciting place. Tolkien does not tell me about an exciting place. He tells me about a one-dimensional set of characters, none of, a, none of which you like. There's no protagonist in Lord of the Rings. There's just a bunch of empty one-dimensional characters who are all boring and annoying. Um, if they all died, you'd be fine with that. If, if Mordor took over, you'd be like, whatever. The orcs are just as weird as the hobbits. Who cares who lives, right? It's very much like that. But given the context, the Lord of the Rings, I think, is absolute crap, that Peter Jackson did an absolutely amazing job of improving on the books. It's the only movie that I know is actually better than the books, and, and not just by a little bit. It is a phenomenally good movie based on really, really crappy books. Um, the Rings of Power series on Amazon Prime really picks up and runs as like a, a serious feels connected prequel to Peter Jackson's work with The Hobbit and The Lord of the Rings. So in that context, I'm really happy with where they're going. I love some of the cast that they have. Um, I love the attention to detail. I love how much it just fits with the movies and you can't tell that it's a separate thing at all. Um, and I like that they have strayed from Tolkien's original work because it's not good. So they, they're taking at least some opportunity to improve on what Tolkien had done, hopefully to an even greater extent than Jackson did. We will, we will see once it gets going, but at this point, um, I think it's well done. And the, the Tolkien universe and style does lend itself to this kind of series. It's meant to be really long and slow and drawn out, and that's exactly what you get when you do it this way. And so that's perfect. So I think this all lends itself well, so I'm very hopeful. So I've been binging that starting today, and um, yeah, I recommend it. Uh, even if you really dislike Tolkien like me, but you love the Peter Jackson movies, I think, I think it'll do well for you. Thanks for joining me. Please remember to like and subscribe. Leave your comments below if you'd like to support me. Buy me a coffee in the links down below. And I will see all of you back from Leon tomorrow.